Welcome to another episode of Making Sense of Social Media Podcast. My name is Lori Clausen. Today we get to talk to an expert, expert marketer. His name is Jason. I can't wait for you to learn from him and hear all of his takes from his experiences and expertise. So welcome, Jason. And thank you for joining us here today on Making Sense of Social Media. Why don't you introduce yourself to the listeners and the watchers today? Yeah, sure. I'm I'm happy to be here. Thanks for the invite. Um, I'll start with Perk Brands, which is our, our company. Um, Perk Brands is a full-service digital marketing agency that partners with organizations, primarily home product manufacturers. So these are companies that make products that go into the building or furnishing of a home. Um, so we we founded this company about 10 years ago. So we just celebrated our 10-year anniversary. Congratulations. Um, but, That's thank awesome. You. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of incredible to look back and think that we've been around for that long. I've actually been in the uh, in this space for a lot longer than that. <laughs> yeah. um, but before I get into that, for Perk Brands, what we found and still find is that companies really probably even more so today than 10 years ago, just struggle to get all of the various web technologies and digital marketing options to work together in their favor. And so our mission really is to leverage it all for them so that they can grow their brand and their business online. And, you know, while that was forming, in the years leading up to that, I worked. Um, I was fortunate enough to work for a couple of, couple of companies as a marketing executive, and then before that, even when I was in college pursuing my degree in marketing design, I started a branding business. So I've kind of been in this world for a long time. You know, back right. then, branding for a small business really meant a, a logo and letterhead, card, <laughs> letterhead, and the brochure. And right, now we yeah. Have a lot more options than that. Um, but now it's it's cool because um, I actually was going to go into architecture as to pursue a degree in architecture. Wow. Um, and then I, I saw graphic design and marketing and kind of got attracted to that. But now I get to meld all that together with the clients we serve. So I have a real, you know, appreciation for Frank Lloyd Wright and, and just well-made home products and stuff like that. So it really means a lot to me to be able to help these companies get their, their message out and get their products out into the world. I love that. So you have such a passion for the customer or the client and what they're doing. And that just helps them, you know, with their digital marketing evolution. That's fantastic. Well done, you. Just fess up. How many hours of HGTV do you actually watch? <laughs> <laughs> I definitely go through seasons for sure. When I was a bit younger, it was a lot more than it is now because I'm just so much more yeah. busy. Um, exactly. But I, I still do get in a little bit of, you know, uh, home improvement time for sure. I, I had to ask. <laughs> <laughs> definitely a fair question. Okay. Let's just dive right into the topic at hand today. We, I do love to chat about content marketing, but you know, whatever this evolves into is awesome for our audience because there is a lot to digital marketing and being successful like on the internet. So let's just dive into some of the questions and see where it goes. Sure. So what are the main goals of creating and distributing content on social media platforms in your opinion and expertise? Yeah. I mean, I think at a foundational level, it's to make a connection. Um, nothing is exchanged without some depth of connection. But mm -hmm. I think we have to start with why people are on social media to, you know, to back that up, to get a foundation. And I think yeah. we, as as all of us included, are probably there for two primary reasons, education and entertainment, that those kind of fit. Uh, there are some pretty wide buckets. So yeah. if we start with those use cases, then, and we can and solve for those objectives, then I think we um, have a really good foundation for creating a connection. Because really, ultimately, what people are, if if we solve for that objective when we're uh, creating content, then we're meeting their objective, and mm -hmm. so then we make a connection. As those kind of connection points are made, and we fill that metaphorical connection jar then the more meaningful our relationship can become with that person and our audience 
which also means the more opportunities we have to solve a problem for them. And in that, so as we continue to build those connections, do you feel like it can maybe get easier to create content that is fulfilling and helpful and useful to them? Yeah, definitely. Because we, um, you know, through engagement and feedback, we start to learn. We have to start with who our audience is and know that. But yeah. we also don't know all the nuances and our audience uh, behaviors and and just society in general changes. And so the more feedback we have, the the better we can resonate with them uh, mm -hmm. while still maintain authenticity to our own brand. Uh, so yeah, yeah, it definitely improves and increases our, our likelihood that we'll connect and it makes it easier to do that because we, we know more about who we are and we know more about who they are. And I love that you pointed out the reasons why we joined social media in the first place or, you know, landed there. How do you measure effectiveness or the impact of social media content is there are there um tools or that you use or maybe key metrics that you are, are mindful of yeah I, I think if we stick with if we start high and we think about things that measure engagement and action i think that's a great place to start because those are the things that move someone to do something um, or measure what people have done and how they've been moved. So ultimately, we want to take that you know passive scroll to some type of meaningful interaction. And yeah. those uh, metrics that have to do with engagement and action help us figure out whether we've done that pretty effectively. Um, it There are some vanity metrics in there that mean less, but they still give us uh, some insight into those connection points. So, you know, I think that there are, uh, to be more concrete, um, if we look at different scenarios, it can certainly, and goals, it obviously depends. But yeah. uh, to give some examples maybe that your audience can use, um, if we start with engagement metrics that most social platforms have or also social platforms have, like likes and comments and shares, again, those are to a degree vanity metrics, but they do indicate some point of connection, some point of curiosity or alignment there. I think um, click-through rates or CTRs are another uh, place to, to dive in. Um, if they're taking some type of action uh, beyond the just scrolling and, and reading, then that surely aligns with the fact that we've hit some kind of chord there. Um, right. Conversion rate gets to be a little more on the website side, but if we have converted them to do a thing, whether it's um, agree to give us some information or some time or some money, then that certainly <laughs> um, helps us measure whether that social post and those previous social posts have done their job. Um, yeah. And then maybe a fourth one would be uh, time spent on content, which probably, again, could be measured more effectively on the website. Uh, if they've clicked over from a social post and spent some time engaging with our content, then that more likely means that there's some alignment there and some curiosity there for our products and services. Or video views too, right? Like just the yeah. length of viewing of the video, that's that's a metric that matters as well. In, I mean, Absolutely. Like Instagram, YouTube, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I love that you're yeah. talking about curiosity because I like we as the marketers we need to pique their curiosity and getting to that point and learning how to do that efficiently and effectively that will never go away that's a I mean that's a task that had to happen for you know the advertisers of the 1950s mm -hmm. in their magazines right they <laughs> they didn't they had to know how to get somebody to either tear out the page or give them the phone call you know so interesting curiosity i love it yeah i think that's you know that's an innate um thing in humans we are we're all curious about something and especially when it comes to solving some level of a problem that we have so yeah that's you're exactly right most uh, social platforms have great metrics built into them though that can be sort of overwhelming a lot of times for our clients so we use a, a platform called databox that oh. integrates with all the social platforms and um, we can create dashboards 
that just pulled together those key metrics, the things that are most important, the things that we're measuring and help them see success and progress. Tools are, there's just so many and every tool promises that it's the best and there's nothing better. And so it's so confusing for especially the small business owner who's trying to, you know, be out here and do this on their own. I hear so. different new platforms every day and yeah. us being curious and us being marketers, we're, we all yeah. have the shiny object syndrome and want to check them out. <laughs> Way too frequently. <laughs> yes, for sure. And especially but, now with AI and the emergence of all of, you know, that additional layer, like the things I've seen already too are just overwhelming mm -hmm. True. Yeah. yeah exciting but a lot <laughs> i justify that curiosity by saying that i'm doing it on behalf of my clients <laughs> so what are some best practices for creating engaging and relevant content for your target audience i know you hear a lot about how do i get more engagement um so what are maybe some of the tips that you might have for the audience today yeah that's a great question so you know, we talked earlier about creating a connection, and I think it really all that goes back to creating a connection. Um, if there's no connection or reason to connect, then engagement is really difficult. I think people um, want a reason to connect, but they also need a reason to connect, which are two different things, though so, so similar. And getting back to what we talked about before, if we if we're first meeting their objective of entertaining and ed or and or educating them on social media then that gives us a baseline to start from um, we use reason as an acronym so reason stands for relate engage assure solve offer and nurture so if we use that as a blueprint Wait a second. Or, mm, <laughs> <laughs> if we use that as kind of a blueprint or a framework then really every business can take that to create social content that creates a connection and engage helps them engage with their with their audience yeah relate engage assure solve offer and nurture that is so helpful to someone who's again like where do I start how do I how do I do this how do I get something on my social platforms that my audience is going to really relate with so this is that's that acronym is I've did you make that up on your own or did you get did. that from Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah we're we geek out on acronyms. We we have like this um kind of like pastors uh or some kind of <laughs> dis, dis, disease, you know, where everything has to start with alliteration and acronyms and stuff, <laughs> but it's fun to do. All right. Well, this next one is a big one and everybody talks about it. At least that's what I've seen. <laughs> So how do you balance the quality versus quantity debate that surrounds posting of social media content? So we think about quality and quantity as two levers, but okay. there's a third lever and it's equally as important and that's feedback. Oh, so, yes. And just to define feedback, it's really just, it means your audience or someone that's experienced in your, in your industry is telling you how to improve your content. Mm. Um, so if you do have a feedback loop, then I'd say move your quantity lever to 100 and produce as much content as you can and get the feedback because you're going to increase your quality as you do that. The more practice you get, the more feedback you get, the better your quality gets. If you don't have a, a good feedback loop, um, you know it available to you then i would say move your quality lever to like 90 um and publish as frequently as you possibly can you know without sacrificing that quality level of 90 the right. because the more content you create the more you can learn what resonates kind of what we talked about earlier um mm -hmm. and then you know but if you if you try to go to 100 on quality without feedback you get hung up on trying to create content that's perfect and then you don't publish as often. And so therefore you don't learn as much as you could by publishing content. So that's kind of the way we look at it. And if you get all three of those levers to hundred, man, your content and your brand is going to just skyrocket because you're hitting on all cylinders. Okay, well, lastly, let's talk about storytelling. So how do you, how do you leverage the power of storytelling and emotion when it comes to social media content? 
Yeah, I mean, you know, storytelling is really kind of, it's in the essence of our connection points. That's how we how we connect and how we share information going way, 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 way back. So it's, it's clearly more than just like a tactic, um, even though we use it as a tactic because we know it works. Mm-hmm. So, you know, like a very simple way to illustrate that in the home product space, home product manufacturing space is to just visualize a before and after picture. Okay. I mean, that is a super, sim- super simple story, but it has a, a beginning and an end and a transformation between the two. Right. And that's really kind of at the essence, what we're trying to do is show transformation from one thing to another when we're telling a story, um, wow. even if it's just sharing information. There are uh, some ads that Apple is currently running for their, their watch. And I mean, it's still a great job of storytelling the ads are i think maybe 15 seconds they're really short and one of them they're they're focusing on the uh track tracking activity tracking feature okay. and so there's a man standing beside a pool uh he's looking at his watch and he's scrolling through these various activities that he can choose and as he's scrolling through them his clothing his attire is changing you know from whatever it is to match the sport Wow. Um, so he settles on swimming, he smiles, and he jumps into the pool. So it, it it's a simple story. You know, it kind of was the, the underlying theme there is this person wants to be healthier, and he's using this product to do right. it. But if we dig down deeper than that, there's just so much more there. If we go back to that reason analogy, you know, he's they're relating to a wide range of people that want to be active, want to be healthy. Um, they're engaging by making it entertaining um, and showing, again, kind of re- expanding their range of people that might be interested by showing all the various sports, whether it's activity, um, you know, jogging or horseback riding or biking or whatever. Okay, um, yeah. Cool. They're they're assuring the viewer that this product is easy to use because you could just you scroll and tap and that's it. Yeah. Um, it's it's solving a problem. A lot of people, if they're trying to get healthy, they don't really know what's work, what works or what doesn't work. And so this gives you a component of tracking it and kind of this accountability that goes with that. And, and then for the offer part, they are pretty clear and simple about that. At the end, it just says wear Apple Watch. So, it, you know, it's not cute or crazy or anything. It's very clear. Um, and then for the nurture, the last part of reason, they do have other ads. So there was another ad that uh, focuses on the sleep tracking or sleep goals. And so that might resonate with, it still is in their ecosystem of health for right. Apple, but it may resonate differently, you know, a person that's more concerned with their sleep than they are with their activity tracking. So I think, right. you know, that's a really good example of how you can take reason as an acronym and uh, give fit it all into a 15 second video. Was, as you were talking, I was thinking like sleep, provide so much inside of that 15 second they provide I mean they're obviously a massive brand and and have been around a really long time so they're very experienced at knowing what type of advertising to provide for their audience but still I what what I'd like to just make sure that anybody listening or watching understands is that this type of thing is possible for everybody it just takes time to do the research on your audience and you know, follow a, a, a framework like your reason and things like that. Like, mm-hmm. that's what I love so much about digital marketing is that the possibilities are truly endless for absolutely anybody if they're willing to put in the the time and the effort. It doesn't always have to be about massive ad budgets. It's just about doing the research, you know, ex- expressing your creativity and 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 creating that connection and curiosity like you you mentioned a few times today so yeah. that's just yeah. fantastic advice you've given today Jason thank you so much this has been For really sure. really awesome. yeah it's been fun make sure you tell everybody watching and listening how they can get in touch with you or where they can find you on the internet sure yeah I mean the best place is perk brands p-e-r-k brands with an s.com um that's and then we link out to our socials from there thank you again jason you've been a wonderful guest and i will have you back for season two you already here first 
(laughs) (laughs) Excellent. I look forward to it. For watching or listening to today's podcast episode, just a reminder that my group coaching program called Marketing Mentor launches four times a year. So if you're interested in being in a group setting of like-minded small business owners who are all going through the same issues when it comes to social media and digital marketing, I'm here to help and be that mentor for you. So go ahead and click on the link that you see in the description below. And I'm excited to have you come and join the Marketing Mentor family. But the, I lost my train of thought. What were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter. I-